Hi there, this is Photography of Director Podcast, and my name is Vitaly Boxer. I'm a cinematographer, and I work on all sorts of different projects, and I've decided to do a podcast about other filmmakers. Today we chat with writer-director Evan Matthew Weinstein about his film Leaving Circadia. We discuss how it got made, who made it, and how selling the film is going. And don't forget, you can subscribe to the podcast on iTunes with a video or audio-only feed. Just look up Photography of Director. And all the links to the films we chat about can be found on photographyofdirector.com. Please enjoy the show. All right. Welcome. Welcome to Photography of Director, Episode 3 with Evan Matthew Weinstein, an actor and director. And uh, we'll be discussing his uh, latest film, Leaving Circadia. Hi, yes. Evan. Hey, Vitaly. What's going on? Let me bring you up so everybody sees you. There you go. <clears throat> Have you? Oh, okay. Now I'm up now. Now you're up. You're being recorded. This yes. is on the record, buddy. Smoke alarm. <laughs> right. You're obviously sitting in a mansion. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, my mansion. <laughs> <laughs> At least you're safe with a smoke alarm. So uh, my all my juice with me. So to give him a little bit of a background, me and you shot a, a, a independent film called Leaving Circadia. Do you want to tell us a little bit about it? Yeah. It's, uh, so Leaving Circadia is kind of like a uh, I would call it, I would consider it a, a romantic dramedy. Um, it takes place in Brooklyn, and it's really about uh, a bunch of post post-college people kind of turning 30 and coming to terms with uh, new responsibilities. Uh, you know, most movies I I would watch about coming-of-age type deals, they would sort of be about people right after college and they, and they never really acknowledged that there is um, – that – yeah, a whole you know generation of people who are still in that kind of mindset where they they haven't found themselves at at thirty and um, and so yeah I decided to write a film like that and and that's where you came in and you shot it for us beautifully I might add and we we had a great film I'm very proud of it I think you are. Yeah, no, absolutely. I actually, I love the film. It's one of the best movies I have personally worked on oh, in terms okay. of in terms of writing and and directing and the cinematography. If I do so myself, do say so myself, it's pretty good. So, so it's overall, it's part. <laughs> overall it's a great movie. And I mean, we're gonna. I brought you on for a few reasons because one, you and a couple of buddies put together an independent film, actually raised a good, decent amount of money. I know, and actually made it happen and did a high quality piece of work. Now, too, you're up to obviously selling it. So this is where a lot of filmmakers find themselves, where they made a movie. Now they actually have to make some money on that movie. So that's an important thing we want to discuss a little bit later. Uh, but before we go into all of that, can you tell us uh, how, you, how you started, how you got into the business, and what were you doing before you actually directed this film? Um, I've always been an actor. Um, when I was, uh, I was a child actor. So, you know, so let's I mention that in, in, in Leaving Circadia, you are the star. Yeah, yeah. So, okay. So, Leaving Circadia, I wrote it and I directed it, and um, I I I wrote it for myself and my friends to be the main, you know, actors because uh, we we weren't seeing a lot of interesting parts, and I knew that I can write something kind of tailored for you know me and my friends that kind of uh, plays to our strengths. So. Um, so yeah, uh, but as, as, aside from from that, I, I've never headlined a film. I, I've had, you know, uh, some supporting things here and there. Uh, I don't have too too long of a resume. It's a tough business. That's why I wrote the film. Um, how, how long have you been acting for? Since when? I, well, okay. So I, I went to college for acting, um, and uh, that was uh, about a four year college BFA with some of the people in my. A lot of the people actually in the film. It's about eight people from uh, from Rutgers, uh, the acting program there at Mason Gross. And um, so, yeah, so I went to school for it. Uh, I've been out for about uh, – I graduated in 03. So I've been out of school since then. And before that I was an actor too in high school. I went out in a lot of auditions. I was a teen actor. 
Uh, I I didn't do, you know, too much. Um, I did a lot of commercials, a lot of voiceovers, uh, things like that. And the filmmaking thing was kind of something that I always wanted to do. And when you say the filmmaking thing, you mean the directing thing? You know, I never actually thought I would direct something. I, I, I really didn't. I, it wasn't the top of my priorities. Although, you know, growing up, I did see like Spielberg. I saw like, you know, I, I, I would always have a new obsession uh, of, of the month of like some filmmaker or uh, some actor or comedian, you know. Like one month it would be Seinfeld. I, I, I loved Seinfeld, you know, so I thought I was going to be a, a stand up. You know, there's so many things that, like, I kept gravitating towards and then getting pulled away. And it was always really acting was my first, you know, passion. Um, Although I feel like uh, it's it's a lot harder to do than be a writer or, you know, because you can write any time. You can't act any time. I guess you can act in the mirror. But, you know, the act of creating something, you can you can always sit down and write so, so you can be a writer so before we move to leaving circadia uh there is something that you did do of some note uh uh a beautiful mind of a gladiator thank you thank <laughs> I don't you know. I'm, i was actually gonna go to holy rollers yeah so you shot a sort of a, i mean I'm, i don't know what role you played but in holy rollers that that was a pretty decently sized independent film with uh, jesse eisenberg yeah so, that was um so that actually that was the inception of this idea because i went uh, we went to um, Sundance. That was up for, uh, I think, the jury prize at Sundance. I, I had a couple scenes. I'm not like a very big part. I was a supporting part. But I, um, I did go to, to Sundance with it. And I thought, wow, this is really cool. I want to uh, kind of have a film here, too. <laughs> it's so easy. <laughs> and I was young and naive. And so, you know, I said. Uh, You're like, uh, I'm Jewish. Sorry. What was that? You're like, I'm Jewish. Jesse's Jewish. We uh, both. <laughs> Jews can do it. It comes easy. <laughs> Little did I know. Uh, <laughs> so, um, so how come you don't own Hollywood yet? That's uh... <laughs> Yeah. Wait a second. So Jews don't, it doesn't come easy? I don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> they, but why? <laughs> they totally lied to us, my friend. They lied. They lied. Uh, <laughs> And this is why I'm in my underwear doing a podcast. (laughs) (laughs) In Siberia. Siberia. You're in Siberia. Some shed in Siberia. Right, in the shed in Siberia. (laughs) I'm in a smoke alarm factory. (laughs) (laughs) With one smoke alarm. Anyway, anyway, yeah. So so how did you get onto Holy Rollers, though? Like, uh, I mean... I just auditioned for that and uh, and got it. And uh, so, you know, long story short, I went out to Sundance and... Uh, I, I decided I would write a, a film. I always liked slice of life type films. I know slice of life in this industry sounds cliche and boring, but you know, like one of my big, biggest, um, I guess I, I'm a huge fan of like Richard Linklater, like, you know, slacker things like movies like that. Uh, I, I love movies that don't feel like you're watching a movie. I love feeling like I'm watching real life. Uh, and you mentioned, I believe, was a Noah Baumbach to me when we started leaving Sergio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember. Uh, yeah, actually, that's really. Uh, I remember. Yeah, funny. I, I, I totally <laughs> uh, forgot. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, no, I haven't forgotten that I'm a huge fan of Noah Baumbach. But yeah, it, uh, guys like that uh, with movies that are very meaningful and realistic, I love. Now, I also love movies for escapism, too. But I feel like uh, right. I really gravitate towards, you know. Um, just real, real emotion and real sort of something that I can identify with. And so, yeah, that was, um, after, after Sundance, I, I started writing this script. It wasn't just you making this movie, Leaving Circadia. It was you and your three, three or four good friends that you basically all turned into producers. You were all actors. You turned into producers to make this movie, right? Correct. Yeah, it was like four or five. Yeah, you know, there's there's a bunch of us. Um, well, we'll, we'll so, go, go go through some of those folks and tell us about them and so what their Reggie background Huck, is. Reggie uh, Huck, who was instrumental in uh, raising uh, the money for the film, uh, he was a producer, uh, executive producer, and he was a um, uh, he plays Davis in the film. 
Uh, there's uh, Drew Seltzer, who was also you know instrumental in raising the money. And, uh, he plays Ray uh, in the film. Uh, Zach Griffiths, who was there, you know, he 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 was very supportive from in in a lot of areas with this film. Um, uh, most importantly, helping you know with my acting in, in scenes and stuff like that. Uh, he um, he plays uh, Will. Was he a producer too? He, uh, he's an associate producer. Got it. And um, Jesse Tendler, who is our producer, he was obviously very instrumental in putting together everything, linking us up, and things like that. And right, and, was, and just, just to make clear, he wasn't the actor in it. He, I mean, he did have a small he, role, he but it's a scene. Yeah. Uh, Jesse is an actor. Uh, he has he has a scene in the film. Which is really funny. It always gets a laugh. Uh, he he's actually one it was the... when I was shooting it. I'm like, why is Jesse in this? <laughs> go, oh, go behind great, the though. go behind the camera. <laughs> it, but, it's such a yeah. no. It's great. It's great. When I when I saw the thing, actually the whole movie, and I just was cracking up at his fucking performance. <laughs> yeah, it, you know, it, it's one of those scenes that like it, it's a little um, on the nose funny. But it's deserved. Like it, it works in in the context of the film. Right. It's a light-hearted type of a scene. So anyone who gets to see this will just laugh their asses off at Jesse's performance for that little bit. It's a little bit yeah. part. Right. Yeah. And he's uh, he's in a, a real estate couple. Like um, so. But yeah, he's he's an actor. Uh, much bigger child actor than I was. Oh yeah, he was on shows. He was actually on TV shows. I forget which he, ones though. He was on a lot uh, and a lot of commercials. Like he, he right. had a very strong career as as a child actor. Right. He messed up and and got into producing. <laughs> yeah, somewhere along the line, he he got he got stupid. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> right. Instead uh, of just collecting that child actor money, <laughs> yeah. he went. To... But he was uh, that yeah, Macaulay Culkin money, as I call it. Macaulay <laughs> Culkin. <laughs> But he he could we couldn't have done it uh, without without him either. So right. without all those guys, obviously they were all instrumental. And it, you know, um, and everybody you know had to wear different hats during the filming and 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 you know step up and and do a lot of you know do a lot more than they than they would normally do because it's an indie film and um, you know and we got it done. The filming went very smooth, you know. It was very smooth because everybody was really uh, uh, just strong, and and everybody everybody was very excited to be doing their first indie film, right. and it's a great feeling. You Except know? Me. doing a film is a great. Feeling. <laughs> Except me, that was not my first indie film. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, I don't. I, I don't know if you ever felt the love, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, look well, at these jokers. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, it was an exciting time, and it was actually really fun to make it. And it went smooth. That's why I keep thinking back to, like, our shooting, our actual the 18 days That's we were smooth. on. How long? Uh, I mean, I came in later in the process, I think, when Jesse brought me in, because we have a history together. But yeah. uh, how long were you guys in discussions and talking about it, and what did you work out before I even ever got there? Well, before you got there, I'm trying to it, – it's kind of hard to – remember the timeline because it was a few years back now right um before you got there i think we were oh, we, were, we were done we were pretty much done with everything you know you were uh, ready to go we, you, were, you, were, you had the money you were ready to go kind of yeah i think that's what it was um we we did i don't think you would have stuck around if <laughs> if we did i'd be like a later later fuckers <laughs> we, i think you would have left that uh that hello? restaurant pretty quick <laughs> i would have left that hello <laughs> <laughs> the crepery or wherever we met <laughs> right to so the great crepes in the village right i didn't even have a crepe <laughs> bad this is a really good place i forgot the name of it but yeah uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I remember we met at a, a casual place and just discussed the next steps. And then I sort of waited for you guys to, to put it together because it still took maybe... The uh, script. No, the no, script. I think the script was done. It was two months, maybe two months after we met. There was a met. little rewrite. Oh, there was. Okay. And you said, oh, wow, it's good now. <laughs> <laughs> or something like that. You were like, oh, this is, this is wow, okay, it's, it's a lot better. Yeah, I, I, I actually remember saying the first thing to Jesse, uh, this is calling me out. After I met everybody, and I was like, "All right, so it's actors who want to make a film." Jesse, you're in for a world of hell. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and you were right. 
<laughs> well, uh, half right because it actually turned out to be a wonderful film. So, oh, yeah, no, we're yeah. we're all very proud. Obviously, we're all very proud of the film, and we we've won some really cool festivals, and you know, we're 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 now in the phase where we're we're seeking distribution. It's 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 my first time looking for distribution, and I know the other guys involved. Um, it's everybody's first time. So you guys, I mean, I just spoke to Joe uh, before you, which is my partner on other plans with, uh, and we got Jamie Kennedy to be in our film. And so, uh, let's talk a little bit about your distribution plan. Cause you didn't get really any name actors in the lead positions. Cause you, you four actors who were producers also, I mean, tell us yeah. about that too. You wanted to, you made this movie also to be in it. Right. And not so, to give it away to somebody else. Right. That's the real reason why I decided to direct because I've, I've done a lot of shorts. I have a lot of comedy skits online and things like that. And I always felt like uh, it's been – it's felt the best when you know I as a writer had a hand in, in seeing the vision out. Um, and you know it's very – it's not. It's not. I mean, there is a little ego involved, but there, it's really uh, obviously there always is. But the, but really, I I just want to see it done right. And um, and when you have a vision, you know, if you can, if you get the opportunity to direct it, uh, you you should. You know, it's it's a very. Uh, I personally feel the the writing is harder than directing. You know, if you could communicate. You can you can direct like you know if you if you if you're not an idiot and you can tell people what you need done and you know and you have good people around you you and you have a strong vision it's all about vision and communication you know uh, if you can do those two things have a vision and communicate I think that you can direct uh, a lot it's amazing how many people don't have communication skills or don't have a strong clear vision you know and. Um, that I don't know necessarily if that's a skill or if that's just something people are born. I don't know, but but those are the two for me personally that made the process uh, easier for directing is is being able to you know just uh, know what you want. And that doesn't well, I, always. I mean, you're, you're bringing you're bringing up a couple of important points. Also, just having the script that's actually good. You know, so yeah, yeah. As long as you need to, you know, you well, I mean, I, I know, I know. It seems obvious, but it really isn't. It isn't made that way. Where a script is good, where, and everybody knows it's good. You know what I mean? And you want to make the best possible movie you can. So, like you said, if you have the right crew as well, the right team yeah. with you, and you're making a good Even movie. If it's a bad script, if you have a good vision for it, <laughs> maybe you. Well, can, you can't. They say know. you can't make a good film from a bad script, but you can't. But I'm you sorry, can, you can still. You can still have a, you know, there are a lot of great directors that that work with bad scripts, you know, uh, and it not necessarily. Okay, well, um, hold on, hold on. Uh, that's maybe later in their lives, but <laughs> <laughs> in the beginning, <laughs> there's yeah, good scripts and good directors, right? <laughs> it, yeah, like you know, I would not want to do my next a uh, next follow up and have it be, you know, a yeah. shit show. Uh, but um which which brings us up to the post <laughs> <laughs> yes so uh, i mean during production it actually went really smoothly for the fact that there was four producers who were four actors all yeah. in the movie and uh i mean and we just, had a few names like you know we had um we didn't have any like huge a list stars but we had you know joe ganascoli from the sopranos uh, we had, uh, you know, uh, Ashley C. Williams from uh, Human Centipede, uh, Christian Coulson from uh, Harry Potter, Michael Cerverus, who's a Tony Award winning actor. Um, you know, we, and we he had was a in lot that Fox really... show too, right? Which is, that's that's that? And he was in the Fox show as well. Uh... And I think he's on, uh, I mean, he, 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 he's on a lot of stuff. He's, he's really, right. you know, and he'll, he'll only get, you know, get more well known as time goes on but all, very, all of those were side i mean they weren't the main characters you four, right, four producers yeah, they, the four they, actors played the main characters i mean yeah. because that's i mean obviously you guys wanted to be in it as the leads but did you ever think that maybe i should put somebody else in those lead positions for business um, reasons not for this project no because the reason why i wrote it was to act um 
And so that being said, it was very important that that remained the same. The directing part, you know, uh, I wasn't so, you know. You weren't stuck on that. Oh, well, yeah, I wasn't so stuck on that, but after a while, it just sort of became right. It was like, well, no one's good. We're not going to get someone that knows what they want, you know. Like, let's let's get it done right. And, and this and the filming part came very smooth, you know, very smooth. After filming is when you know. Uh, How long was the shoot? Just give us some details before we go to post. Do you remember any of the details? Was a shoot. We had well, we had two shoots because a lot of films, a lot of times, you have we had you pickups know, and stuff, right? Pickups, yeah, and that's that's normal. So was um, it 18, 18 days? That's I think some, it was. Yeah, something there? very small. We were we were going through like Grant through Richmond. I mean, we were just right. Going Eight, Eighteen that script. days, mostly in Brooklyn. <laughs> was like a, a lot of dialogue too, and you would look at the script and go, "Great, we have uh, five pages of dialogue here." <laughs> well, yeah, I know. Well, I was like, that's just par for the course for an independent film. But yeah. I mean, we also had other things. We are one of our lead actresses. Her scheduling, we had to work around that. Like, I remember, oh, yeah. um, I remember yeah, shooting so you. Blonsky was doing, and and she plays uh, the female uh, lead, <laughs> and she's amazing, uh, by the way. So I'm not she's amazing. Yeah, she's incredible. But I remember when we were doing she's the so scheduling. Incredible. Yeah, that and she was doing another play. I was shooting her coverage. She would have to leave. And then, well, I, and yeah. then I have to shoot your coverage and you acting to almost basically nobody. Right? <laughs> I was, it was <laughs> to, to like a, a CGI ball. movie. Like <laughs> I was acting. When you look at the trailer and you see there is a scene with us on the couch in the trailer, right. you will see you know, her and me on the couch. We were never in the same room. Well, uh, except uh, that one like wide shot. She's never there because she's, she's doing a play. You know? And scheduling is the hardest thing to do when you're doing it. One of the hardest things to do when you're – when you're doing a film is, is scheduling everybody. Uh, I, that would make me go nuts, you know? Oh, it totally did. Uh, it made me go nuts. <laughs> yeah. so, and as an actor too, you know, you realize, wow. So I might be acting across from nothing. And that happened uh, many times. Many times. And, and, and honestly, you did a fucking fantastic job. Let, let me go to and show so the editors. <laughs> let me, let me go to, uh, uh, the actual trailer just to show a bit of the movie. Right. Yeah. Hold on. Where's the fucking sound? Hold on a minute. Okay, let me start again. <clears throat> well, the 30, Marty, how's it feel? Hey, what are those? Oh, flyers. This is for Phil's falafel. You ever eat it? Phil's falafel? No. Me neither. You want to get him off my fucking car? I got a lot of new people in the building, so I'm counting on you. The shower was supposed to be fixed six hours ago. I called you. Oh, yeah, the phone company shut my service off two days back. I saw a uh, new girl moved into Mrs. Sacco's old apartment. It's a girl. She's out. Hi. Are you the super? And this is where you meet the girl. Hi, I'm the super. I'm looking for the super. My circadian rhythm is different than most. Your what? I sleep, get up, eat, all different hours. I think you're the most unhealthy person I've ever met. We did it raw a couple times. She thought her birth control didn't. I took her to the doctor. We got in a big argument that night. She said that she wanted to keep it if I did. Why didn't you tell me? I have hundreds of condoms I don't use. So cool. I'll let the folks check out. Also, I'll put a link on my site, of course. Yeah, but we didn't trailer. get to the part with the... Uh... Oh, the couch? couch. <laughs> Let's go to the couch. I mean, she's CGI'd in most of us, right? <laughs> yeah. Her head. Oh, on, here, here, uh, here you go. To new beginnings. <laughs> That's you drinking yeah, alone. I'm <laughs> Me? No. The two the shot, obviously, she was there. <laughs> yeah, no, the two shot, but, you know, the, the scene is intercut. Yeah, of course, of course. We didn't have a lot of too many close ups in this film either, if you remember. I like my medium shots and long shots. Yeah, and and you were you were so picky about. Uh, I always need this headroom. <laughs> yeah, I, so for me, like I, you know, personally, do not cut off someone's of, hair. I, I I'm a very <laughs> big fan of ultra well m- more more like realistic uh, films where you're not you're not 
Too close. You know, you're not. You're you're not looking like this. Right. You know, right. unless it's a really pivotal moment. Take a step back, please. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to scare everybody. I've just I lost a like hundred viewers. Fly on the wall. I like it. You know, more theatrical. And right. so that's well. It, it's it's a personal preference and one and out of spine. And for this project, you know, um, I'm there. Might be a project in the future, God willing, that I do that I I have a different idea about. You know, um, but for this, I I thought that it it. it it didn't work. It looked more like a real film when you're not trying to. I don't know. For right. me, for me. Well, it's over dramatic. Obviously, you add that drama when you come in really tight on someone's face. You know that's right. And there are a few times we do. Right. Um, yeah, but you're you're right. It was it was meant like you said to keep it more like a Noah Bob back thing where it's a let's look at their yeah. lives. That that's, sort of aesthetic works right. for this kind of film. All right. Well, let's follow these people around, see what they're up to, sort of a thing. But we still shot it fairly controlled it wasn't like oh this is all handheld we still use dolly sliders etc yeah et cetera. and you and me sat down and you know we we discussed you know uh plan b plan c we we sat down quite a bit yeah uh, we broke and, down the whole thing yeah yeah and and figured out our shots um now you said some directors don't do that no oh uh, no i mean yes that's what i said that's what i mean <laughs> Not everybody wants uh, to do that, and a lot of times they just want me to come up with a whole breakdown. And I'm cool either way. So it's whatever. Some directors are auteurs. They want to control as much as possible. And other directors are like, I just want to work with the actors and you handle the photography. You know what I mean? So it yeah. really depends on who you are. And I don't mind either way. So Right. Anyway, so moving on to now we got through the shoot, you had a long post process. Like it was... Uh, Ups yeah. and downs and ins and outs. I don't know how much you want to talk about it, obviously, but, you know, tell us what you feel comfortable well, with. What I will say is that, you know, we had a lot of people uh, producing this, a lot a lot of people who had a say and um, who had to agree on, on th- little, little tiny things to big things, you know, um, and many movies – don't go through that long post-production process. You know, a lot of times, a lot of things are figured out beforehand. And, you know, one of the things, and and there was a lot of things, minefields that I went through in this first film that I won't have to, hopefully, you know, uh, learn again for the next film. I I know now. You're completely wrong. You will go through a whole different set of minefields. Hopefully, because (laughs) there's always, you know, that factor in this business, you never know what's going to happen. But, but being smarter this time, uh, you know, and, and learning what I did from this, from this process, this, this particular part of the process in post, uh, had a lot of people that had to agree and it took a long time. And, you know, I personally had to um, try my best to stick to my guns about what I felt was, you know, my particular vision as a director. And, uh, you know, in the end of the day, I, I, a lot of people came together to make this movie. So well, well, what what process are you in now? You're actually in discussions. I know, I know we don't want to go into details, but you're talking about with people about actually getting it distributed now. Yeah, um, yeah, we're talking to distributors. Uh, uh, tell us a little about it. How difficult it is? Like, uh, it's, to, it's very difficult, and it's not. Re- I'm still on trying to understand it. Um, you know, this is my first film, so I'm still trying to understand where, you know, what. My, my foot, our footing, you know, uh, it, it's, it's complicated. It's, well, yeah, because now it becomes about legal and contracts and lawyers and the artistic portion is yes. sort of removed completely. Oh yeah. 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 Actually, you know, and, and it's interesting you say that because, you know, that all costs money too. Um, which you have to be aware of before you go into a film. This is a lot of, you know, uh, a lot of things that come up that immediately need to cost money, you right. know. I liken it to a cake spoiling. So you have a deal here, right? And you get you get, you know, uh something called deliverables where now they want, you know, 
everything in the film, music cues, sound cues, thing. These are things that no one tells you about, you know. I, until I, I, until I you have to deliver it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even think you realize, like, oh, wait a second, deliverables. <laughs> no one talks about this this yeah. shit. You know, <laughs> it's like it, it, there's so much stuff that you have to get done. That's a that's a you know that's money right there that you need to put into the budget beforehand. And um, a lot of indie filmmakers, I mean, uh, they no, they don't. It's either it's one or the other. They don't know, or they worry about it later. Or they worry about it later. In my case, I I, I kind of knew. Like I kind of knew that there was stuff you needed, but and we had discussions all along that there was stuff. Yeah. but and and I'm yeah. sure there were times where we were like, "Wow, <laughs> when will we get to that point where <laughs> we will we will need that?" Um, right. But yeah, the point. Bottom line is that there's a lot of stuff in in the post production process that costs money and that you will need to uh, uh, to get. Right, and, and a lot of times, just to make it more uh, clear for some, because I went through this with other plans when we got our, our deal uh, to get our international distribution. So uh, just to make it clear for other people listening that uh, uh, deliverables are a big thing, and that is not sometimes, and also quality control. Sometimes a distributor or the seller's agent will ask you for certain things that you cannot do on your home PC. <laughs> so they will yeah. say, go to this lab, pay them lots of money, and we need their report. And it's not like you can you can just print that on your printer and uh, do that. So that's it becomes impossible. A lot of times they want a sort of QC and uh, they want a color correction by a lab or they want if they're actually picking it up to actually sell it and and they have to go to uh, you know they need certain criteria met for television in different countries and different territories and. Right. God knows I know very little bit about uh, what Nigeria needs. So, <laughs> but that's – and we had to go through that. And that. That's very expensive. I mean tens of thousands of dollars when you know, you're trying to make an independent film. And yeah. just to clarify the point that this is critical and not a secondary consideration. Right. Anyway. It's very critical and it's something you need to think about uh, before, beforehand as well. Right. So, or raise the yeah, money. Hopefully we're... raise the money during the shoot or right after or something like that. And, and we're we're in the process now of trying to figure out what is a good contract and what what isn't, and you know it always helps a film to have huge stars, you know, or or bankable stars. Uh, we chose a difficult route, and but that well, said, you, you, uh, can you actually uh, elaborate? Because basically, you guys starred in it. Right. Yeah. What happens yeah. to what about the other actors that you use that do have sort of a name? Uh, did they yeah, help you? And any? that's that's why we you know and we, they're great actors and we're happy to you know to have them in the film. Um and and it's important to have solid actors around. You know, um, I knew everybody in the actors. Everybody in the actor is a great film. Uh, <laughs> everybody in the film is a great actor and. Uh, you know, and that's true. Like, um, that's absolutely true. Reason. Actually, I was surprised by everybody's just a everybody. performance There's of everybody no, was top notch. The, yeah, and and the one thing we may not have names in the film, but it is a good film that everybody's proud of, and it's a very um, well acted film. We've had some good reviews. Pardon me, good reviews, and we've had um, you know great festivals. Uh, that have given us great awards, so that's that uh, is, makes it strong, you know. Um, that makes up for, uh, you know, not right. having a Tom Cruise. Well, uh, well, my question was: when you talk to the distributors, do they even care that you had these secondary roles filled with those actors, or they well, do they like the gloss over? You know, um, it it all depends. Different distributors care about different things. You know, not there's not. I don't think there's any one distributor that you know is alike. You know, I, I, I they all like to make money, but I think you know <laughs> <laughs> they all like that. They all like money. We've learned yeah, something like today. <laughs> but, but you know, in the end of the day, I just think that uh, it comes down to preference. Um, what what you know, or or there could be somebody that you know that you know has all sci-fi films, and they're like, well, I'm going to these markets. I need like a, a strong romantic comedy or romantic dramedy. I don't have that. You know, we're talking to one distributor that doesn't have that, you know? Right. So he's trying and to fill his little slot basically. One with distributor your... doesn't have that in a slot. And that could, you know, they may, uh, who knows what kind of movies they've distributed, but they don't have that. And they're a distributor. You know, that gives an incentive, you know, different people. 
it could it could work out better for you than a distributor that has all romantic comedies. And that's just going to be, uh, you know, another one that just sits on the shelf behind, you know, some some plasticky film, you know, because I wouldn't necessarily consider this a romantic comedy, but it's a, uh, you it's, know, it's, it's a, a, I was thinking of a slogan. It's a bromantic comedy. <laughs> yeah, that too. <laughs> but there's there's a strong female lead in it, you know, like she's a protagonist. Right. It, but yeah, it is. It has been described actually as, you know, what you said, like very, very strong in the, and that's true. Like, you know, I, I wrote strong male, uh, bromancy things. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, there are some great scenes and people should check it out, especially when you're getting high in the van, in the, in the truck. <laughs> like that is worth watching the movie for anybody who's thinking of watching this movie that you should that's watch cool. it just for that scene. That, uh, that is actually the best executed uh, getting high scene in a truck <laughs> I've ever seen or shot. <laughs> this is pretty good. Yeah, no, I was going to steal that idea. I wish you cut it out of the movie. I would have put it somewhere else. Well, um, uh, I, I fought for it. <laughs> it. It's really good. And then when, you're, when you guys are running through the field. But anyway, you guys should watch it. So obviously they can't watch it yet. That's the thing. They can see the trailer online, which I'll post to, but they can't see the movie until you've, you've got a distributor. You release it, yeah. yeah. Right. And I, I really hope everybody does see the movie because, it, it, you know, it... People are surprised when they see it. They're they're like, oh, that's really well. Good, really where well can done. they reach you? I mean, I usually don't ask people for their information directly, but do you want you know people are interested in seeing the movie and being on your mailing list if you have one? Yeah, well, come on Facebook, and we also have a web page. The web page is leavingcircadia. dot com. dot com, and then uh, leaving Circadia on Facebook. Um, if Facebook ever implodes. We'll always have the Leaving Circadia webpage. And if the web implodes, just... Uh, right, we're all dead. Find, <laughs> so. find me doing Shakespeare up in uh, uh, Canada somewhere. Got it. <laughs> all right. Well, obviously, I wish you the best of luck because I'm a part of this film too, not only for yourself. <laughs> no. Uh, it, was, it was... You know, you, you personally made this process easier for everyone because you were the professional you you were like the, the 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 senior on set the guy who knew <laughs> the old guy you, know, <laughs> the, the, you were the one who just you know you knew the ins and outs and we could not have got I, personally as a, as a first time director honestly and you know this uh i i could not have gotten this made without without your help or you know with your knowledge because uh any novice any anybody less than your expertise in 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 your role in this film would have just tanked the film like I, I could not have gotten you know you were always there for advice you always knew exactly what to do so I mean you know they, I'm a first time director this is not like you know I'm not performing magic here like there are people around especially in acting you know like uh, you know having you behind the camera and then you know being an actor as well and directing everybody sort of wears different hats, you know, um, mm -hmm. the, the, you know, all the producers who are my friends and, uh, the actor, their actors in it too, <clears throat> they would, they would be wearing different hats when I'm in the scene, you know, watching my acting and making sure as you were too, you know, behind, you know, you're all kind of looking. That's, that's why when you're acting and, and directing a film, you're, you know, you need people, strong people around you to, uh, to, to keep the film going because you can't do it alone. You know, you need people who know what the, the hell they're doing, and uh, well, that I, was you. No, definitely, <laughs> definitely, thank you. That's uh, it's really nice. I wasn't trying to get that out of you. <laughs> so, no, but I mean, that's true. Thank you. Like that, you know, and you need you need a good. Uh, you need good people around you if you're going to do a film. You better yeah. vet people. <laughs> correctly oh know. yeah no absolutely because it's just it's too difficult and the days are too long if you don't have a support structure in place to uh, and then you can't make a good film if you just don't have those people so like you said yeah all right yes. cool well it was it was a pleasure chatting with you and obviously i want people to go find you on facebook and leaving circadia go find the film and uh we await to hear more because there'll probably be a follow-up interview with evan about when he actually sells it and when we can watch it on our iTunes or our VOD or whatever the hell we watch these days. 
Yeah, something. It's it's completely changed since we uh, every year it changes. <laughs> You're like, I was trying to get a DVD deal, and now <laughs> yeah, <laughs> nobody wants a fucking DVD. It, it, like the business just constantly changes. It's, you know, you have yeah. to keep uh, on your feet. I know, and for old men like us, it's 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 too tiring. <laughs> I'm 23. I don't know who you're talking. <laughs> right. About. Well, I'm only 24. There you go. Okay. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Evan, and uh, we'll see you soon. All right. Making films is not always a positive process. It's not always a negative process. Sometimes it lands in the middle. And uh, sometimes one part of it is easy and one part of it is hard. It's just the way it goes. But the simple fact is all these filmmakers still want to go back and make another one and another one and another one. Don't forget you can email us at info at photographyofdirector.com if you have any show ideas or would even want to be on the show. Please let us know.